السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته بسم الله الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وصحبه ومن تبع هداه ما بعد As it was announced a little bit late the talk will be in عقيدة about توكل I don't know if this was discussed before because they told me there are some topics they were discussed in عقيده you have been taking عقيده right so the issue of tawakkul tawakkul is understood generally as reliance on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala but what is the reality of it what is the practice of it how can we fulfill tawakkul in our time especially in a time when we see people many of them if not a lot of them they are actually not fulfilling tawakkul so the difference between tawakkul according to ahlu sunnah ahlu tawhid and tawakkul for the people of shirk generally understood tawakkul is reliance on allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that is what tawakkul generally is about but some scholars say this is in Arabic how is your Arabic good very good <laughs> very good <laughs> so it says صدق اعتماد القلب على الله what does that mean صدق اعتماد القلب على الله the reliance of the heart truly on Allah truly on Allah that your heart is sincerely relying on Allah in what? في استجلاب المصالح ودفع المضار in bringing benefits and protection against harms bringing benefits and protection against harms in all matters of dunya and akhirah in all matters of dunya and akhirah Again, the true reliance of the heart on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in bringing the benefits and protection against harms of all matters of this dunya and the akhirah. That's what tawakkul is. That's what it's all about. Now, to fulfill your Iman, because many people say, I am a believer, and the pillars of Iman is to believe in Allah, to believe in the Prophet ﷺ, to believe in the previous messengers, to believe in the books of Allah. We do that. That's true. But how you believe in Allah? What is your perception of belief in Allah? Scholars say, to truly believe, truly believe that no one gives and withholds, no one benefits and harms except Allah to truly believe that now what does that mean if you go outside you park your car illegally will you get a ticket or no you get but you know the police officer he is going to give you a ticket because you violated the law but to fear that police officer without remembering that Allah Azza wa Jal is the owner of everything that is a lack of Iman. Why? Because sometimes, now these are exceptions, but it could happen. Sometimes you park and you get no ticket. Sometimes the police officer comes and tells you, okay, not that he shouldn't, but it happens. Ibrahim alayhi salam, when he was thrown to the fire, the nature of the fire is what? Does it burn or no? It does burn. But why did it not burn him? Why? It is from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So to have this true reliance on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When Ibrahim alayhi salam was at that moment, imagine being thrown to fire. Jibreel alayhi salam came and he told him, do you need anything from me? From Jibreel? He said, no. From you? No from Allah see even Jibreel so you when you have this reliance 
on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that's the fulfilling of Iman. That is the fulfilling of Iman. Now, let's see what Allah Azza wa Jal says about tawakkul in the Quran. We have many ayat. Why? Because tawakkul is integral part of Tawheed. You cannot be a true believer. You can say, I am a Muslim. You can say, I am a believer. But a true believer without tawakkul, it doesn't happen. It doesn't happen. Allah Azza wa Jal said, and this is in the story of Musa alayhi salam with his people. <coughs> they were in the wonderland 40 years. They were prevented from entering. And they were told, you have to fight. You have to fight. The people of Musa alayhi salam, they were rebellious. They refused. So Allah says, Qala rajulani. Two men from those who feared to disobey, upon whom Allah had bestowed favor. Those are exception. Two people from the people of Musa, they weren't like the rest complaining. No, those people, those two, they are better. That's what Allah Azzawajal said. Udkhulu alayhimu al-bab, fa'idha dakhaltumuhu fa'innakum ghalibun. Once you enter from the door, you will be predominant. The point in this evidence is at the end. I put it in bold. وَعَلَى اللَّهِ فَتَوَكَّلُوا And upon Allah rely. Upon Allah rely. Now, this case talks about what? Here, what is the context? What is the story? I just told you earlier, the people of Musa were told to enter the city. In this city, who lived there? Their friends? Their people? No, their enemies. So there will be what? There will be what? Fighting, war, right? In war, you rely on what? You have weapons, right? You should have weapons. You should have preparation, yes or no? But these weapons will make you victorious? What will make you victorious? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now, some people would understand that and say, okay, then I don't have to prepare my gun. I don't have to... No, you do that, but you remember that who's the one who gives you victory? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's why it says, وَعَلَى اللَّهِ فَتَوَكَّلُوا وَعَلَى اللَّهِ فَتَوَكَّلُوا Why? In some interpretations, those people, قَالُوا يَا مُوسَى Earlier, this is in Surah Al-Ma'idah, the story is mentioned. قَالُوا يَا مُوسَى إِنَّا لَنَّ نَدْخُلَهَا أَبَدًا مَا دَامُوا فِيهَا We will never enter that city. Why? They told him, فَذْهَبْ أَنْتَ وَرَبُّكَ فَقَاتِلًا Go, you and your Lord, your Lord, you fight. We are not going to fight. Why? Some interpretations came and said, the people lived there, they were giants from the Amalik, they were big. And the people of Musa considered themselves inferior. They are weaker, so they cannot fight them. But the command came, you fight them, it's your responsibility. Same thing, Ibrahim alayhi salam, when Allah Azza wa Jal told him, وَأَذِّمْ فِي النَّاسِ بِالْحَجِّ Proclaim Hajj on mankind. How was Ibrahim alayhi salam able to convey the message to everyone? One man conveying the message to the entire world. No microphone, no internet, no nothing. How he was able to do that? So this is the true reliance on Allah. You do what you're supposed to do, but when you do that, you remember. Who's the one who's really going to do that? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's one ayah. Another ayah. This is in Surah Ali Imran. إِذْ هَمَّ الطَّائِفَتَانِ مِنْكُمْ أَنْ تَفْشَلَا وَاللَّهُ وَلِيُّهُمَا وَعَلَى اللَّهِ فَلْيَتَوَكَّلِ الْمُؤْمِنُونَ Before the battle of Uhud, Abdullah ibn Ubay ibn Salul, the leader of the hypocrites, he withdrew with one-third of the army. Two groups of the believers, they were affected by that. They wanted also to leave. But Allah Azza wa Jal helped them. 
and then Allah said وَعَلَى اللَّهِ فَلْيَتَوَكَّلْ الْمُؤْمِنُونَ in the same surah ayah 160 إِنْ يَنْصُرْكُمُ اللَّهُ فَلَا غَالِبَ لَكُمْ إِنْ يَنْصُرْكُمُ اللَّهُ فَلَا غَالِبَ لَكُمْ if Allah should aid you no one can overcome you but if he should forsake you then who will help you? After that, what did Allah Azza wa Jal say? وَعَلَى اللَّهِ فَلْيَتَوَكَّلِ الْمُؤْمِنُونَ وَعَلَى اللَّهِ فَلْيَتَوَكَّلِ الْمُؤْمِنُونَ Nowadays, some people, they look for publicity and they want to be known. They try everything on Facebook, on Twitter, on TV, on... And they get many likes, many people knowing them. They, how if all that, thousands of people were happy with you and they always ask about you and they always want to know about you and encourage you, but you're doing something displeasing Allah. So all that will help you. Will it help you? But if Allah Azzawajal is with you, then why would you care? You shouldn't care about anybody else. Allah is with you, no one else matters. Allah is not with you, the entire world will not help you. That's what the Prophet ﷺ was trying to instill in the minds of even youngsters. So they would grow up on the Tawheed. When the Prophet ﷺ was riding and Ibn Abbas was with him on the same camel. The Prophet ﷺ was telling Ibn Abbas Ya Ghulam. You safeguard the commands of Allah, you fulfill them, Allah will protect you. When you ask, you ask only Allah. Only Allah. Can people help or no? People, when we ask them, can they help us or no? What do you think? They can help us or no? People, you ask them, please give me this. Can they do that or no? They can. They can. But even that, scholars said, if you can do it, you shouldn't ask anybody. That's why when we pray every prayer, we say, You alone we seek for help. So if you are telling Allah, we only ask you for help. Why you ask someone else? Only when you need to. The companions, they fulfill that. If something dropped like that, anybody can come and pick it up. But they wouldn't tell anyone. They would step down and take it and put it back. They would never ask anyone. That was their reliance on Allah. Yes, people can. But you know that the one who make people can do this, Allah. So you ask only Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. See how many ayat. But I want to ask you something. Now, what is the difference? Tawakkalu ala Allah, ala Allah tawakkalu. Rely upon Allah, upon Allah rely. Is there any difference? Or it is the same? Now the ayat, the previous ayat, three ayat I showed you. Which one? Which one was it? The three previous ayat. First or second? First or second? Second. What's the difference between first and second? Let me repeat it. Okay. This is the first one. Ayah 23 of Surah Al-Ma'idah. وَعَلَى اللَّهِ فَتَوَكَّلُوا إِن كُنْتُمْ مُؤْمِنِينَ Upon Allah, rely. Okay, that's the first ayah. Second ayah. Upon Allah, the believers should rely. Third ayah. 
upon Allah, let the believers <coughs> rely. So, rely upon Allah or upon Allah rely? Why? What's the difference? The ayah says only Allah. When, when you say upon Allah rely, it means only Allah. And rely upon Allah. Very good. Yes, that's exactly the difference. You see, in English, I don't know, we don't have pens. <coughs> In English, it's always subject, verb, object. That's the order. Ahmed, so Muhammad. You don't put <coughs> so Ahmed Muhammad. It doesn't make sense. What does it mean? So Ahmed Muhammad. Subject, verb, object. Ahmed, so Muhammad. So Ahmed is the one who saw Muhammad. Muhammad, Ahmed, so also it doesn't make sense. But in Arabic, when you say rely upon Allah, you are relying upon Allah, but you could also rely upon others. And that's what most people do. People of Tawheed, the true belief, they rely only upon Allah. That's why in Surah Al-Fatiha it says, Iyaka na'bud. It doesn't say na'buduka, we worship you. No, it says, Iyaka na'bud. You alone we worship. So scholars say in Arabic, advancement means limitation. When you advance what is supposed to be later, which is the object, usually the object is at the end. Ahmed, so Muhammad. Muhammad is at the end. But when you put the object, which is supposed to be at the end, at the beginning, upon Allah, rely, you are limiting that act only to the object, to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So you rely only upon Allah. That's why Allah Azza wa Jal reminded us in the Quran, وَعَلَى اللَّهِ فَتَوَكَّلُوا وَعَلَى اللَّهِ فَلْيَتَوَكَّلِ الْمُؤْمِنُونَ وَعَلَى اللَّهِ فَتَوَكَّلُوا إِن كُنْتُمْ مُؤْمِنِينَ If you are true believers. Now, you ask anybody, anybody in our time, they will say, well, I rely upon Allah. Even the kuffar, you ask them, you believe in Allah? They say, yes, we believe in Allah. What about those idols? No, no, we don't rely on them. They are just means of help. No. Look what Allah Azza wa Jal says in Surat Fatir. In Surat Fatir. يُولُجُ اللَّيْلَ فِي النَّهَارِ وَيُولُجُ النَّهَارَ فِي اللَّيْلِ He causes the night to enter the day and he causes the day to enter the night. وَسَخَّرَ الشَّمْسَ وَالْقَمَرَ كُلٌّ يَجْرِي لِأَجَلٍ مُسَمَّى ذَلِكُمُ اللَّهُ رَبُّكُمْ لَهُ الْمُلْكِ وَالَّذِينَ يَدْعُونَ مِن دُونِهِ مَا يَمْلِكُونَ مِنْ قِطُمِيرٍ The ayah is long, but the point is here at the end. And those whom you invoke other than him, do not possess the membranes of a date seed. You ate dates, right? Have you, ate, have you eaten dates before? You ate. So, Allah Azza wa is saying, anyone other than Allah, even, not the date, not the date seed, no. What is left on, you see there is a small, tiny thing, like that, on the date seed. That thing, they don't own it. So when you say, why you are standing in front of the door of this boss, of your boss? Yes, he is your boss. The check doesn't come from him. Yes, you're supposed to do a job and you expect a check at the end. It's not from him. He is not the Razzaq. Allah is the Razzaq. That is the true reliance on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You say, well, I'm not worshipping him. True, you're not worshipping him, but you are doing things they are not supposed to be done except to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Yes, that doesn't mean you are rude to him, that doesn't mean you disrespect him or disobey. No, he is your boss, you do what he's supposed to asking you to do, you do what he asked you to do, but anything other than that, 
That's all you're not supposed to do. Allah Azza wa Jal says, وَالَّذِينَ تَدْعُونَ مِن دُونِهِ مَا يَمْلِكُونَ مِن قِطْمِيرٍ Now let me ask you this. Do we have this thing happening in our time or no? You find some people going, not only to living creatures, even to dead people. Unfortunately, is this happening or no? People visiting the graves. Now what is wrong with that? Actually, this is recommended. You go and visit the graves. That reminds you of the hereafter. This is what's going to happen to you. You're worried about dunya, about life, about future. And one day out of the sudden you're there. You didn't take money. You didn't take credit card. You didn't take anything. So it's a reminder of the... But some people go there and they start asking the people who are dead. What is wrong with that? What is wrong with that? They were righteous people. They were good people. So why not go there in front of the grave and try? Maybe this will help. What do you think? What is wrong with that? Is there anything wrong with that? What? What is wrong with that? How? I'm relying on Allah. I prayed. I just prayed and came to the grave. I'm not worshipping. You see, this is what most people do. They don't worship the dead. Yes, they are not praying to the dead. They pray to Allah. But they are asking them. See what Allah Azza wa is saying? They possess not even this. Imagine someone who's poor. And you keep coming to him and asking him. And someone owns the bank. Not works at the bank. Owns the bank. And you leave him. People will look at you and say, you are insane. That's the least. You go to someone who's poor. We're talking about human beings, creatures. How about Allah Azza the Creator? You leave the Creator and you come to those people. What did Allah say? They possess not even the membranes of a date seat. Not even that. They don't have it. Continuing in the same surah after that. In tad'uhum, if you invoke them, لا يسمع دعاءكم. They do not hear your supplication. ولو سمعوا and if they heard, let's say they heard, they don't hear. That's what Allah said. They are dead. They are next to you. Everybody else is hearing. Those who are alive, those who are dead, they don't hear you. That's what Allah is saying. إن تدعوهم لا يسمع دعاءكم. Say they might hear. They won't. But let's say they heard your dua. Can they help anything? They won't respond to you. And on the day of resurrection, they will deny your association. What association? Did you associate them with Allah? Some people say, this is not shirk. It's just a small request. Allah called it shirk. You can call it whatever you want. That's the Quran. You see, when people speak and talk, tell them, I want one simple thing. Tell me from the Quran. Isn't it the book of Allah? I want the word of Allah. I accept whatever Allah says. That's what Allah Azza is saying. You go to the grave and you ask someone, no matter how, even the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, even the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, the most beloved human being to us and to Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala, the one that Allah Azza wa gave as shafa'a you go to his grave, you ask him for the shafa'a. This is considered shirk. Well, Allah gave him shafa'a, yes, but even if he wants to give it to you, he cannot. Without the permission of Allah, he cannot give it to you. مَنْ ذَا الَّذِي يَشْفَعُ عِنْدَهُ إِلَّا بِإِذْنِهِ You know this ayah or no? All people read Ayatul Kursi, but they don't understand it. مَنْ ذَا الَّذِي يَشْفَعُ عِنْدَهُ Who is it? that will intercede without his permission. No one. Even the Prophet ﷺ, yes, even the Prophet ﷺ. You go, you visit his grave, you say salam to him, that's all permissible and recommended. That's what the, what the, the Prophet ﷺ himself said. But to ask him, no. Allah Azza called that what? Shirk. Even a small request, yes. That's what Allah Azza is saying. You could call it whatever you want, it is shirk. And unfortunately, you go around in many Muslim countries, that's what they are doing. What are you doing? This is shirk. No, no. I worship Allah. I'm just asking this wali, this 
good person. He had miracles when he was alive. He had karamat. Whatever he had, he doesn't own this thing. He cannot benefit you, not with the date, not with the date seed, but even with that thing that is left on the date, date seed. That thing, he cannot help you with. That's what Allah Azza is saying. People can say whatever they want. This is what Allah Azza is saying. Here is another ayah. Ala lillahi al-deen al-khalis. The people of Mecca, when they were worshipping Allah, they had some idols, yes or no? Those idols, did they consider them rivals to Allah? They knew they are stones. They are not Allah, they are not the creators of heavens and earth. When you ask them, they themselves tell you, Allah is our creator. But why then they are worshipping those idols? How they worship them anyways, how? By asking them to benefit or harm. That's it. You benefit me. Don't, I will not do anything in front of the idol. It might cause harm. That's it. Allah Azza wa called that what? Ibadah. That's the worship. The worship is not just to stand up and perform prayer. Any type of ibadah you divert it to other than Allah, that is shirk. That is shirk. So, what did Allah say? Ala lillahi al-deen al-khalis Walladheena yad'oona min duni ma na'buduhum illa liyuqarribuna ila Allahi zulfa They are only bringing us closer to Allah. They are means to reach Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. What did Allah say? Allah inna Allah yahkumu baynahum yawm al-qiyamati fi ma hum fihi yakhtalifun إن الله لا يهدي من هو كاذب كفار. Is that the case that those idols will bring them closer to Allah? Allah said they are liars. Is that the case that those dead people they will bring any benefit or protect you from any harm? No, that's a lie. That's what Allah Azza wa Jalla is saying. Again, people can say whatever they want. That's what Allah Azza wa Jalla is saying. Remember those two ayat. Ayah 3 of Surah 39 and Ayah 13 and 14 of Surah 35, Surah Fatir. Surah Fatir, Surah Al-Zumur, Surah Al-Zumur. And the last one, the last one is in Surah Yunus, Surah 10, Ayah 18. You memorize those three ayat and that will help you a lot. This is Surah Al-Zumar, Ayah 3. And the next <coughs> Ayah in Surah Yunus. وَيَعْبُدُونَ مِن دُونِ اللَّهِ مَا لَا يَضُرُّهُمْ وَلَا يَنْفَعُمْ وَيَقُولُونَ هَا أُولَاءِ شُفَعَاءُنَا عِنْدَ اللَّهِ قل أتنبئون الله بما لا يعلم في السماوات ولا في الأرض سبحانه وتعالى عما يشركون. الله كنسدر ذات شرك. Why? What did they do? They only said these are our intercessors with Allah. This wali, this righteous person who passed away, he will intercede for me with Allah. As long as he's alive, no problem. You ask him to pray for you. You ask him to ask Allah because Allah is the only one who can help you. Someone died, you ask him, what did Allah say? Shirk. That's what Allah is saying. So whatever people say, let them say whatever they want. I didn't worship them. I only wanted them to intercede for me. These are our intercessors with Allah. What did Allah consider that? Shirk. Even at the time of the Prophet 
There is Salat al-Istisqa. It is a Sunnah when there is no rain that you ask Allah, you pray to Allah for rain. They used to do that. And the Prophet ﷺ did that. <coughs> Medina was part of the Arabian Peninsula, so they had desert. After the death of the Prophet ﷺ, was it ever reported that even once any of the companions or the successors of the companions, they came to the grave of the Prophet ﷺ and they asked for rain? They asked for... No! At the time of Umar, radiallahu an, Umar himself, he told Al-Abbas to lead the prayer. Al-Abbas, the uncle of the Prophet Sallallahu Who is better, Al-Abbas or Umar? Umar radiallahu an. Umar is better. So why he asked Al-Abbas? Because of his nearness to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. He is from the family of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Why would he ask Al-Abbas to lead the prayer? They could have easily turned to the grave. Prophet ﷺ was there, but he was dead. Next to them, O Messenger of Allah, we need rain, so please. Never. It was never reported that this happened. So in our time, unfortunately many people are doing that. They have this fear, not natural fear, like the fear of lion, fear of animal, you are afraid of someone. No, you have a fear that should be only to Allah. You are afraid of someone. Oh, he will harm me. Oh, he might benefit me. Let's go. Where is your reliance on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Aren't you ashamed? Some people, subhanAllah, aren't you ashamed that you leave Allah, the one who owns everything? وَعِنْدَهُ khazain. To him belongs the vaults of heavens and earth, the dominion of heavens and earth belongs to Allah. You leave that and you ask someone. So, true reliance is not only something that you believe. This is not theological talk. This is practical. It affects every single movement of our life. The Prophet ﷺ said in one hadith, very beautiful hadith, in Musnad of Imam Ahmad, in Sahih ibn Hibban, in Sunan al-Tirmidhi, in Mustadrak al-Hakim, it is authentic. The Prophet ﷺ said, لَوْ تَوَكَّلْتُمْ عَلَى اللَّهِ حَقَّ التَّوَكُّلْ If you rely on Allah, the true reliance, لَرَزَقَكُمْ كَمَا يَرْزُقُ الطَّيْرِ He would have provided you as he gives provision for birds. تَغْدُوا خِمَاصًا They go early in the morning hungry and they come back in the evening full. Full. If you rely on Allah, truly, truly, that's the thing, because most of people, they rely on Allah, but not through reliance. They rely on Allah and on someone else. So Allah would leave you to that someone else that you're relying on also. I gave you everything. I own the dominion of heavens and earth. And you ask someone else? Oh no, no, I didn't pray. I didn't commit shirk. Just asking someone something they cannot do, bringing harm, causing harm, bringing benefit, that is considered shirk. You rely on Allah, the true reliance will give you like, will provide for you like providing for birds. Some people would say, okay, I will rely on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, so what I'm going to do? I'm going to sit inside the house. Oh Allah, no. Even in the hadith, what did the Prophet ﷺ say? Taghdu, which means they go to work. And that is the correct understanding. You don't just, you don't just say by words, I rely on Allah and that's it. No, you have to do the act. But you know when you, do, when you are doing the act, that this is not what is going to give you whatever you are asking. Allah is the one who is going to give you. That's what the Prophet ﷺ did. So you are supposed to do whatever you are doing, but you rely on Allah. Another beautiful story at the time of the Prophet ﷺ, one man asked the Prophet ﷺ, should I tie the camel or rely on Allah? You're coming to class, right? To Dar al-Ta'lim. So you parked your car downstairs, right? So why would you lock it? Don't lock the car. 
you're coming for Islamic course, Allah will help you, right? You leave the car open and what happens? The car is stolen. Whose fault is that? And you blame Allah. Oh Allah, I came to class and I came for religion and this is what happened to me. That's not what Allah is. You do your part. You are supposed to lock your car. You lock your car. But even when you lock your car, you know that this is only means. You rely on Allah. Because some people, even though they lock their car, what happened? Still, it could happen. So when the man asked the Prophet ﷺ, O Messenger of Allah, should I tie the camel, fetter the camel, or rely on Allah? Prophet ﷺ corrected that. He told him, you rely on Allah and you tie it. Tying does not mean you don't rely on Allah. <coughs> and not tying is not the true reliance on Allah. In our time, that's what many people are doing. What's the matter? We are Muslims. We're asking Allah. Nothing is happening. Well, because you're doing it the wrong way. The Prophet ﷺ would try his best. When he cannot do anything else, that's when he asks Allah to help. Oh Allah, I leave my power. I did what I can, but I know that this is nothing. You are the one who's going to help. So, oh Allah, help me. In our time, we sit and we ask Allah, oh Allah, help us. I didn't get a job. Why? Well, I was asking Allah. Every prayer, I'm in the masjid. And I'm in sujood, a lot of dua, I want job. Okay, have you submitted any resume to any? No. Have, so how it will happen? You see, this is the thing. You have to have the correct understanding of reliance on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. In all matters. In all matters. And that was the sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Hajar, the mother of Ismail. What happened to her? Where is the reliance? You are sitting in a place when there is nobody and you have a baby and there is no water. Without food, without water, you die. What happened? When she asked Ibrahim السلام, who asked you to put us here? He said, Allah. She agreed and she was content with that. What happened? Soon after that, when she relied on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, but she didn't just sit doing nothing. She went back and forth. Only to find that the place where she left, that's where the water came from. That's the reliance on Allah. We, with all what we are given, we're very weak. We cannot do anything. Allah is the one who does everything. And we are not asking Him. You see, the Prophet ﷺ, of his dua, لا تكلني إلى نفسي طرفة عين يا حي يا قيوم برحمتك أستغيث I don't know if you know this dua if you say it يا حي يا قيوم برحمتك أستغيث أصلح لي شأني كله ولا تكلني إلى نفسي طرفة عين What does it mean? Now you say this dua, alhamdulillah, that's good. What does it mean? Do you know? You, you see, it's much better. It's good you're saying it, but it's much better when you understand what you're saying. لا تكلني إلى نفسي طرفة عين Do not make me rely on myself even the blink of an eye. Even the blink of an eye. Because if you rely on yourself, Allah will leave you to that. Let your heart pump on its own. Can you do that? One heartbeat stopping one time and you need to go to the hospital because you cannot make it move. They have to do <coughs> surgery if it's complicated or they have to have the <coughs> machine and all that is an entire process. Allah Azza gave you that for free. Breathing, your breath. Go ahead, make your body breathe. You say, okay, I'm doing that. But even this, Allah can stop you from doing that. Without the order from the brain that the lungs they need and I saw this subhanallah I saw it with one man one old man he's fine and nothing wrong with him suddenly he needs oxygen and you feel that his head and face is blue what happened 
his brain is not issuing enough command to get the breathing. So eventually his lungs are with no air. So he could die. And he realizes that, but he cannot do anything, subhanAllah. Even when you know, he cannot do anything. So that is the reliance on Allah. وَعَلَى اللَّهِ فَتَوَكَّلُوا You look at people, they put, they place certain things in the house, blue eye, blue horseshoe, they tie something to their hands, to their necks, in the car, why? So there is no accident, there is protection. So that is going to protect you? No, no, Allah is going to protect me, but so who told you that this is going to help? Well, Allah is the one, but this will help. How this is going to help? Who told you that? Isn't that what we see from some people? Yes or no? Yes. Why? Why they do that? If they believe that this doesn't help, why they put it then? And if they believe it helps, what is the evidence? Who told them it helps? Some people, oh no, no, it is decoration. If it's decoration, why only blue color? inside the house. Why not red or black? <coughs> so there has to be true reliance on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You rely truly on Allah. Wa ala Allahi fatawakkalu. Only on Allah. Not you, not those whom you love, not those they love you, not even the powerful ones in this dunya because the strongest one, a small virus, that is invisible with the eye could cause you to die. Could cause you to die. <coughs> a mosquito that you barely see could cause you to die. That's who we are. That's how we are weak. The one who is all powerful is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So I hope we fulfill the reliance on Allah. وَعَلَى اللَّهِ فَتَوَكَّلُوا The true reliance that we only rely on Allah, that we only ask Allah, nobody else, no one else. In our action, in every action, in every single action, in our words. Yes, we thank people, thank you for doing this, but we know if Allah willed, this wouldn't have happened. You see, everything else is attached to the reliance on Allah. Qadr. If you rely on Allah, you accept the Qadr. Many people, they have problem with the Qadr. Why this happened to me? Why I am the one who is chosen? Why it didn't? Well, it is all going back to reliance on Allah. When you rely truly on Allah, you fulfill the ayah. إِيَّاكَ نَعْبُدْ وَإِيَّاكَ نَسْتَعِينَ Because you rely on Allah, and that's why you're not asking anybody else for help. No, no, I can help you. I know you can help me. And I'm not denying that but I know that without Allah's help not you not the entire world can help me that's what the Prophet ﷺ told Ibn Abbas know that the entire nation the entire world if they were to gather together if they were gathered together if they were to gather together to benefit you in something, they would never benefit you without <coughs> Allah's help. If Allah did not decree that they will be able to help you, they will never help you. And if they were to gather together, to harm you, they wouldn't be able to harm you with anything that Allah did not decree. See, this is what the Prophet ﷺ was telling a youngster. In our time, we have people with PhDs, with degrees, all people, and they don't understand this simple fact that everything belongs to Allah. Allah is all-powerful, that we are very limited, that we cannot do anything. We cannot do anything. But to some people, this is very hard to understand. No, no, I'm not asking them, I'm just trying to seek help, why not? Well, <coughs> Allah is telling you, you ask Him only. Someone coming, Handicapped, on wheelchair, okay? We have the stairs, right? I hope you have no problem climbing the stairs, <laughs> coming. Now, this person on wheelchair cannot come. So we try to bring him up. Four or five people 
we try to carry him. Why? Do we want to help or no? You see someone on the street, on a wheelchair, dropped something like this, and trying to get it. We try to help, yes or no? We try to help, why not? So, we try, that's the thing. He's on wheelchair, and we see the tear in his eye, that he cannot stand up. Can we do anything about that? Doctors, let this handicapped, what about the blind person? You see a blind person trying to cross the street and you see cars and he's not noticing. You try to help him, yes or no? Can you make his eyes see? No? You cannot. Who can? Allah. You see? Sometimes we understand it correctly, sometimes we don't. Here everybody agrees. I sympathize with you. I really want to help, but I cannot. Who is the one who can? Allah. So ask Allah only. We see that with some injured people, with some certain cases, but it is actually in all cases. It is the same. It is the same. وَعْلَمْ أَنَّ اللَّهَ عَلَى كُلِّ شَيْءٍ قَدِيرٌ This happened in the case of the man who died for hundred years. He came to a village and he saw the village empty, destroyed. So he wondered, أَنَّ يُحْيِي هَذِهِ اللَّهُ بَعْدَ مَوْتِهَا How would Allah revive this land, this city, this village, after it's already dead? فَأَمَاتَهُ اللَّهُ مِيَةَ عَامٍ 100 years Allah caused him to die. ثُمَّ بَعَثَ Then he resurrected him. قَالَ كَمْ لَبِثْتْ How long have you lived? Have you stayed asleep, dead? He said, يَوْمًا أَوْ بَعْضَ يَوْمٍ He didn't notice. قَالَ بَلْ لَبِثْتَ مِيَةَ عَامٍ 100 years. فَانْظُرْ إِلَى طَعَامِكَ وَشَرَابِكَ Allah kept the food and drink intact. The food and drink which usually takes sh short time, it was left. What about the animal? Wandur ila himarik. Himar usually takes long time to decay. <coughs> its bones disintegrated. Wandur ila al-idami kayfa nunshizuha thumma naksuha lahma. Allah brought it back to life. After all that, he told him, Qala. وَعْلَمْ أَنَّ اللَّهَ Know that Allah is able to do all things. You see, when you know, and we all know, but the problem is sometimes we forget. We forget that Allah is the one who knows. When you know that, you acknowledge that, you will not ask but Him. And inshallah, I hope that we really fulfill that. We fulfill the tawakkul. Because tawakkul leads us to action. Correct action. Correct action doesn't mean that we rely on others. It doesn't mean also we sit and doing nothing. We do our best as the Prophet ﷺ did, but at the same time, we're always asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I will stop here inshallah. We'll take a short break before we start the second session. Jazakumullah khaira. Sallallahu wa ala Muhammad wa ala Any questions about tawakkul? About, yes. What is that? <coughs> Cloud seeding. Well, again, Allah didn't tell us to try our best. Same thing with a woman who's not pregnant. Going to the doctor. Trying to have a surgery. Trying to... Is that permissible or no? It is permissible. It is permissible, but... We have to know without Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, none of this matters. Allah didn't tell us not to try to use our means. But when we use what Allah gave us, we always rely on Allah. Whether it is about the rain, about the clouds, whether it is about pregnant, whether it is about going to the doctor. Actually, this is a famous issue. This is a good question. Because many scholars discuss the issue of relying on Allah and not going to the doctor. You are sick. You are sick. 
Do you go to the doctor or no? What do you think? You go to the doctor? Why? Who's the one who made you sick? Allah. So why don't you ask Allah to cure you? The doctor is going to cure you? No. The doctor cannot. The doctor only prescribes medicine. Healing, cure is from Allah. So why don't you cut this all short and you only rely on Allah? Again, the one who made you sick is Allah. So you ask the one who made you sick to cure you. <coughs> yeah, but we have to do something, so Allah will... The same thing like with the, the men, uh, need to type their camera. Yeah. We cannot just like, relax upon Allah, we have to do something and Allah will... So, going to the doctor does not negate reliance on Allah. Why? Because the Prophet ﷺ himself said, Tadawaw, seek medication. But when you seek medication, you're not seeking cure. Cure is only from Allah. Otherwise, anybody who took medication will be cured. And that's not the case, or that's the case. Anybody who took medication immediately became cured. Otherwise, we don't have dead people from cancer, from because they go to the hospital, they pay a lot of money. But it, does that negate reliance on Allah? No. But even with that, actually some scholars said, if you refuse to take medication, and you say, I will rely on Allah, that is permissible. Some scholars said that, but they said that's not to everybody. That's to the one who has stronger reliance on Allah. That they don't seek medication. There is a group of people who will enter Jannah without accountability. The Prophet ﷺ said, their character, one of their characteristics, لا يسترقون. They don't seek ruqya. What does that mean? They don't ask for medication. Even though it is permissible, but they truly rely on Allah, 100%. Even though the Prophet ﷺ said, Tadawal, you seek medication. But to remove any slight doubt that maybe the doctor, because he's good, maybe the medicine, it's expensive, maybe, no, they don't want anything. It is from Allah. That is also permissible. Good question. Any other questions? You pray to Allah, you ask Allah for something, and that thing is not happening. So, well, we only we can only pray to Allah and ask Allah, but can we force Allah? Never. Depends on what you're asking Allah, because even the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, he asked Allah, and Allah did not. Grant him the answer. Even the Prophet ﷺ, he said, I asked Allah three things, he gave me two, and he refused one. So even the Prophet ﷺ, sometimes his dua was not accepted. Because we are not in control, Allah is in control. We only ask Allah. But when we ask Allah, we know for certainty that what we are asking for is either going to happen, because Allah is so generous that he will make it happen, or he will keep it for us as a reward until the day of judgment. We see it there. Or instead of making it happening because Allah doesn't want it to happen, He will stop something bad from happening to us. One of three things for the believer. That's what the Prophet ﷺ said. Whenever you ask Allah, one of those three things has to happen. But to say, I asked Allah and that means it ha has to happen? No, not necessarily. Allah knows. Many times, I want this, I want this. Your child does not understand exactly how things work. So he wants to eat every day ice cream. Every day ice cream. And you tell him no. Not because you don't love him. Because you know more than he knows. Same thing. We don't know. But we're asking Allah. We think this is better for us. That's why we have been asking Allah every day. Allah knows best. There is a reason.
Of course. That's how you should believe always. If it's good for you, it will happen. It's definitely going to happen. Allah is the most merciful. Not only mer the most merciful. So if He knows that this is best for you, it will, go, it will happen. And many cases, many stories. One man has been asking Allah for years and years to have children. And he didn't have children. Why? There was a reason. Then they found out that the, he had a disease. And if he had children earlier, they would all die. After seven years. Imagine seven years trying everything. And it didn't work. So Allah knows best.